Hello and welcome to this third demonstration uh, for HEAPS. Uh, this is part of the secure system course uh, as part of the NPTEL. Uh, so this code can be downloaded, uh, it, preferably you can download it from your virtual machine which comes along with this course and uh, we could then run uh, these codes. So we are looking at uh, t2.c uh, today. Now uh, this would uh, uh, this particular code again it is not an attack or it does not actually show a vulnerability, but it is essentially used uh, to tell you the some aspects about the internal workings of the heap allocator. There are various parts in this heap allocator. Um, the first thing we would do, so what we would do is uh, look at it one by one. Uh, we would uh, break the program in various uh, points like this and uh, we will just run part of this program. So, uh, what we do in this particular program is that uh, we define character pointers uh, 9 of them a 1 to a 9 and allocate 120 bytes for each of them and then uh, simply just print the addresses for each of these 9 pointers. Uh, so, this is nothing unusual about it. So, we would make clean make and run t2 ok and uh, one thing what we need to see is that these 9 uh, pointers have been allocated different addresses. So, note that each uh, allocation request is for 120 bytes and uh, if you actually take the difference between any 2 consecutive pointers for example, a 2 and a 1, uh, a 5 and a 4 or a 4 and a 3 you would see that the difference in these addresses is 128 bytes. The extra 8 bytes uh, comes due to the presence of the metadata. So, uh, for example, for the chunk of memory a 1, the metadata is present no first ok. So, for example, a 2 which starts at 0 8 0 4 b 4 9 0, the metadata comprised uh, which holds the size and other information starts at the location 8 bytes uh, before this. Similarly, uh, for all other pointers. The next we will see is a very important function known as the traverse heap function. So, what we are going to do is that we are going to traverse uh, the heap and look at the various metadata contents present in the heap. So, uh, this function, so before we go there, we can just put an exit here uh, soon after traverse heap. Uh, just to ensure that uh, we get another partial output. So, this particular traverse heap function uh, takes a memory location for example, uh, a 1 over here which uh, incidentally is the first malloced chunk of memory and then it would obtain a pointer to the metadata for a 1 chunk which is at a location 8 bytes from where the pointer is actually obtained. So, the metadata comprises of uh, uh, two important fields, one is the, the size which is of uh, 31 bits uh, starting from the most significant bit which is the 31st bit to the first bit and uh, the in use bit which is of uh, which is the 0th bit or the least significant bit. A value of uh, 1 is in use while a value of 0 over here indicates that the previous chunk is free, the size of the chunk that has been allocated. So, uh, since we have uh, requested for 120 bytes and uh, there is an additional 8 bytes allocated for every malloc request. So, what we would expect to see is that the size of this chunk uh, is 128 bytes. So, this is a printf which then prints uh, the various aspects, it prints a pointer, uh, it prints the size and it determines whether there is uh, it is in use or not in use. So, let us uh, compile and run this program again and uh, we see the internal details of the metadata. Now, corresponding to each of these uh, pointers which we are defined, we get the location of the chunk. So, for example, uh, a 1 is at a location 0804b410 and the metadata corresponding to a 1 is at the location 0804 b 408. 
Now, the size of this metadata as we have mentioned is 128 bytes, uh, 120 bytes for the requested metadata and uh, the remaining 8 bytes, 120 bytes for the requested uh, allocation uh, and 8 bytes uh, for the metadata. We also note that previous in use uh, flag is set to 1. So, this indicates that uh, the previous chunk of memory is not in use. The next thing we do is we go one step further, we can uh, disable this uh, traverse heap, uh, remove the exit from here and uh, notice that we have actually freed a couple of these pointers. So, we in fact, we have freed A2, A4, A6 and A8 and we then traverse the heap again and put the exit uh, just after this new traversal and what we are going to see is the metadata present in the heap changed due to the free invocations that are done. So, we compile again, we see that unlike previously where all the in use bits were set to 1, here because we have actually freed 4 pointers or 4 chunks of memory, we have 4 of these previous in use uh, bits set to 1. So, let us uh, look at it a little bit more closely. So, uh, uh, the first thing to notice is that uh, all of these uh, pointers A1 to A9 are contiguous with A1 having the lowest address uh, followed by A2, A3 and so on till A9. So, when we have freed A2, the free allocation adds the chunk corresponding to this A2 pointer in a linked list and it marks the, uh, the in use bit in the next chunk as 0. So, corresponding to A2 over here uh, for instance, uh, if we just follow these fields, we see that the next chunk uh, of memory corresponding to A3, uh, the in use bit is set to 0. So, we do this check over here uh, in, in these uh, few lines. Uh, what we do is that we first determine if the next chunk that is present, the adjacent chunk that is present has its in use bit set to 0. If so, then uh, we print some details about the linked list that uh, PT malloc maintains. So, in this particular case, uh, the linked list would be present at the locations uh, chunk plus 2 and chunk plus 3 respectively. So, the these memory contains com uh, has uh, previous and next pointers to the next nodes in the linked list. So, since we have uh, deallocated or we, since we have freed 4 uh, chunks of memory A2, A4, A6 and A8, uh, we have 4 nodes in the linked list. So, we could actually follow this particular linked list. Uh, we would start from here. Now, this particular pointer F7, FB, 87, uh, B0. Uh, would actually point uh, to some location uh, within the heap management. So, this would permit PT malloc to identify the head of the linked, uh, linked list. The next pointer is 0804B588, which essentially points to the next free chunk, which is this. And uh, you look at this particular, uh, the next free chunk, that is this free chunk. Uh, we see the previous pointer pointing to uh, this one, the first chunk that is freed and the next pointer pointing to the next chunk. So, what we are seeing over here is a doubly linked list. Uh, we have this chunk which is pointing to the second chunk, the second chunk points to the third chunk, uh, third chunk points to the fourth chunk and uh, the other way also. Also note that this is a circular linked list because the last uh, freed chunk in the list also points to the same location as that of the first chunk that is F7, FB, 87, B0. Now, what we do again is that we would request for uh, memory to be allocated again uh, with this call to malloc and uh, what we would see is that since the linked list uh, is available and the linked list uh, is not empty. So, the PT malloc would in fact remove an free list chunk of memory present in this list and allocate this chunk of memory to this malloc request. So, uh, what we will do is uh, remove the exit from here and let the program run to completion and uh, we would see how uh, uh, the metadata stored in the 
malloc uh, changes. Yeah, so this corresponds to uh, the first uh, traverse heap uh, over here with the uh, four elements in the uh, linked list of uh, free memory chunks. Now, uh, with this allocation, another 120 bytes, uh, what PT malloc has done is used one of these chunks which are in the free list and therefore, our free list now just comes down to uh, having just three memory chunks present. Also note that the memory that gets allocated corresponds to the recently freed A2. So, for example, A2 was pointing to this location 0804B490 uh, and uh, it was freed and uh, the new memory request was also given exactly the same memory chunk. Therefore, this new request and A2 point to the same uh, chunk of memory. Thank you.